I'd like to welcome Dr. Levi Garraway. He is Assistant Professor in the Department of Medicine at Harvard Medical School. He is also Assistant Professor of Medicine and Medical Oncology Service at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. His talk is Insights into Tumor Biology and Therapeutic Resistance from Systematic Genetic Studies. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for letting me. Would you begin by discussing your current research to get detailed genomic information to characterize solid tumors? Sure. So I think it's by now well known in the scientific community that cancer can be thought of as a disease of the genome. There are changes in genomes in the cancer compared to the germline, which are important to drive cancer. It's also the case that cancer can change further over the course of treatment. So if a, a patient actually does receive therapeutic benefit from a treatment and the tumor shrinks, if it grows back, it can look different and the genome can be different than uh, it was before the treatment. So studying the genome and in general using uh, systematic approaches to understand the changes uh, between normal and tumor and then uh, over the course of the treatment of cancer are quite important to understand how to get better control over cancers. Would you speak about your studies of the genes and pathways enacted by genomic alterations? Sure. So our the focus in our lab has been primarily on two cancers, melanoma and prostate cancer, although uh, the genomic studies give opportunities in other cancers as well. So there, the questions have been several. In melanoma and prostate cancer, we have wanted to understand better the spectrum of changes in genes that are caused, caused by mutations and other types of genetic alterations. What is that spectrum, and are there areas of tumor biology that we really don't know about as well, we haven't studied as well? Because if we can know that, we may be able to broaden our repertoire of drug targets and targetable approaches and obviously uh, that will help us meet the medical need in those two cancers. What are you learning about resistance from these, uh, from these studies? Well, one lesson that we've learned about resistance is that it's probably going to be as complicated as the study of the primary spectrum of genetic alterations in cancer, although there are some themes that have emerged. So, for example, if you are... Uh, looking at resistance to one of the new targeted agents, for example, one of the targeted kinase inhibitors, sometimes you can categorize the mechanisms of resistance that occur into themes. So there may be a certain category that turn the pathway back on at one level and another category that will bypass that level but turn it on downstream. And maybe yet a third category that bypass that pathway altogether and then go and cause resistance by a different way. So by coming up with categories, sort of frameworks for thinking about resistance, we hope that we'll have a platform, a conceptual platform, to think about combinations that might hit the most, uh, either the most common or the most um, uh, offensive of those and hopefully help us on the path to durable control of many types of cancer. You've mentioned the importance of linking specific tumor genetic alterations to key druggable cellular mechanisms. Would you discuss translation of this work to patient benefit? Sure. Well, there are, are many aspects that are required to translate genetic information into patient benefit. One broad aspect of that is just the um, logistics, the feasibility of actually in the clinical arena being able to get biopsies from patients or from archival tissue, recover DNA, sequence or profile that, that DNA, and come up with a list of not just the whole list of every single thing that went wrong, but the subset that might be useful to clinicians and then actually give it to clinicians in a way that'll be useful. So that's a logistical path that needs to be worked out. But there have been great strides. Many cancer centers have now uh, taken big steps to make that process something that can be done on a larger and larger fraction of tumors. The other becomes more um, conceptual. When we get that information, how should we think about organizing it? what types of mutations or alterations are more important than others? If we were to come up with a hierarchy mm -hmm. of which mutations should we really pay attention to in terms of making a clinical decision versus others that are a little bit more um, peripheral to what's important, that whole, con that whole area is still, the interpretation at a conceptual level is still in its infancy, and I think that's going to be an important area to focus on in terms of making personalized medicine uh, more applicable in cancer. So what are the next steps in your research? So for us, we, we want to hopefully chart out a means by which knowledge of resistance at a systematic level can help us come up with a framework for getting better control over cancers where we're getting responses already. 
secondly, we are continuing our and not only our search for new genetic alterations, but really now uh, attention to what's the biology that's linked to those new recurrent genetic alterations that already have been discovered, but for which we haven't really studied uh, yet. And third, we're interested in this concept of making all this information palatable to the clinician who perhaps doesn't spend part of the time sequencing genomes and exomes as they uh, care for patients and hopefully improve outcomes. Dr. Garraway, thank you so much. Sure. Thanks for having me.